Do you believe in ghosts? Do you believe it's possible to communicate with the spirits of those who have passed on before us? Have you ever had a spiritual experience that changed your life forever? And have you ever wondered why life is filled with so many trials and tribulations, yet fail to get the answers from mainstream religions and philosophies? If so, you're not alone. In this podcast, we will endeavor to answer some of those questions, although the answers will come from a largely misunderstood and overlooked source. Prepare to expand your mind and your perception of reality. This is the journey into spiritualism. Blessings one and all, and welcome to Journey into Spiritualism. I'm Paul James Caden, and on today's show, we are going to be talking about The Unquiet Dead, which is a book by Dr. Edith Fiore. The subtitle of this particular book is A Psychologist Treats Spirit Possession, Detecting and Removing earthbound spirits. This is a, a little bit of an older book. The copy that I have is copyrighted 1987. And I'm not sure if that's a, a first print or a second print. So it may even have come out earlier than 1987. But it's a very interesting book, particularly when you... Um, look at it from the standpoint and subject of spiritualism. Because this particular book talks about human beings being actually possessed by the disembodied earthbound spirits of other people. And now when we say the word possessed, we usually think, Linda Blair, the exorcist, people speaking in unknown tongues, you know, spinning their heads completely around in a circle and doing all kind of creepy things. But that's not what we're really talking about when we're approaching this subject. I suppose to give the best idea of uh, what this all entails is to give you the background how Dr. Fiore uh, came to be interested in this subject. Now again, she was a practicing psychologist, and she says that one day uh, a man came to her in her practice, and he was having some difficulty because he, he was having this obsession with sex. Just every thought he had was about sex and just like he couldn't get enough. And he didn't understand why this was happening. There was nothing in his life that he could trace this to. He, he wasn't someone who watched pornography or you know, did any of this kind of thing. So he was trying to figure out, why am I feeling this way? Why do I have these thoughts almost all of the time. And Dr. Fiore, you know, spoke with him and, you know, she really couldn't pinpoint exactly what was going on with this gentleman. So she decided to put him under hypnosis. And her sus suspicion was that once he was under hypnosis, he would break through the subconscious into his memory that was obviously, um, you know, suppressed. And, you know, she would find out that at some point in his life, he was probably abused as a child by, you know, a mother, a father, a close relative. You know, she'd seen this dozen of, dozens of times in her practice. But when she put this gentleman under, uh, he began to talk about being a Catholic priest and how it was very difficult for him to keep his priestly vows because he wasn't allowed as a Catholic priest to have 
relations with a woman or marry. And these are things that he really wanted. And it became kind of an obsession for him, you know, that he wanted to be a priest. He wanted to serve God, but yet he wanted to have a family. He wanted to have a wife of his own. He wanted to have normal relations that a man and a woman would have. So under hypnosis, Dr. Fiore is hearing all this and she's saying, well, what, what have I missed here? Did I miss something in the initial interview with him? I don't remember him uh, telling me that he was uh, a Catholic priest at one point in time. But as the session went onward, uh, the man began to say that he lived in the 17th century, that he was a Catholic priest and that he had died of a heart attack in his early to mid fifties. And that eventually, um, it was uncovered in the session that the spirit of this priest who died in the 17th century, uh, somehow, uh, became attached or attached himself to the aura or energetic body of this man. And so the man who was alive in the present day was picking up on those urges, those sexual frustrations of this spirit of a priest who was attached to him. And so Dr. Fiore says in the book that when these spirits attach themselves to us, we often start to experience their feelings, their thoughts that they had when they were alive. If they were someone that was very anxious, we will suddenly become very anxious. If they were someone who uh, was really obsessed with physical sex, we might start becoming obsessed with those kinds of things. If they were someone who was afraid of dogs, maybe they were attacked by a dog, uh, you know, as a child, maybe this is how they passed. Then of course the host will have an irrational fear of dogs. And there are many examples of this in Dr. Fiore's book that someone who had drowned and then their spirit attached to a human host and the human host is uh, starting to experience, you know, being deathly afraid of water. They'll never go swimming. They'll never go on a boat. They just have a complete unexplained dread of being in the water. And it turns out because of this spirit of someone who drowned is now attached to them. So they're experiencing that fear of the spirit that is attached to their energetic body. And another example from the book, The Unquiet Dead, talks about a woman who came to see Dr. Fiore and, uh, the woman had this uh, irrational fear of death and dying, uh, but also uh, I, I believe she had some apprehensions about religion and God. And, you know, all this was very scary to her. And, uh, you know, Dr. Fiore, again, you know, puts this person under uh, hypnotic regression. And it's the same thing. She starts, the woman who's under hypnosis starts talking like she's someone else, that she was this man who committed suicide. I believe he uh, jumped off of a bridge and when he died and he was outside of his body, he was very afraid to move on. He was afraid to go to the light because suicide was uh, a grave sin. So he was surely going to be judged and sent somewhere bad. And it's said that the spirit of this man who committed suicide, he was just wandering, just wandering around. And one day he was walking down this, uh, you know, or traveling down this road and he saw a little girl, uh, in the front yard of a house playing with some toys. 
And there was something just so innocent and so comforting about this little girl just sitting there innocently playing. And the spirit of this man went immediately to her and attached himself to her aura. And as the little girl grew, the little girl grew up and got older and you know, grew into a woman, uh, she started experiencing these irrational fears of uh, death and dying and, you know, going to hell and all of these uh, bizarre phobias. And again, it said that all of this was coming from the spirit that was attached to her. Now, this might be a little bit of a strange concept. Uh, most of us think about being possessed by demons or non-earthly entities, but we would never think about being somehow possessed or interfered with by the spirit of another human being. But as a spiritualist and also a paranormal investigator, when I think about this, uh, it kind of makes sense to me because in paranormal investigating, you always see that spirits attach themselves to houses, pieces of property. Sometimes they even attach themselves to an inanimate object. And you read all of these stories, many of them, that someone goes to a yard sale or an antique shop and they buy an old picture or a jewelry box or some antique item. And then when they bring this item home, after a while, all kind of crazy paranormal things start happening. Or they're seeing uh, the spirit of a strange man or woman materializing in their home. And they're saying, you know, what is this? Who is this? And then they realize, oh, when I bought that picture, when I bought that old trunk or that old lamp, whatever it was, that's when all of this started happening. There must be a spirit attached to this item. And this is absolutely something that does happen. So if a spirit will attach itself to a house, a home, a room in a house, uh, a piece of property, an inanimate object like a picture or an old jewelry box or an old rocking chair, whatever it might be, who's to say that a spirit wouldn't attach themselves to another human being? And could it be that some of the problems that we have, these ancestral problems, you know, my mother dealt with depression or anxiety and her mother dealt with anxiety and depression. And now I have anxiety and depression. Well, maybe when grandma passed away, mom's mom, she attached herself to the mother. And then when the mother passed away, the, you know, that, that spirit attached themselves to the granddaughter. It very well, uh, it, it's plausible when you think of it from a paranormal standpoint. And it's actually a, a subject that's covered in Dr. Fiore's book that uh, she says that some spirits will attach themselves to their relatives because it will be one of these cases where maybe a father dies. And the son or the daughter pleads, don't leave me. Please don't leave me. I can't be in this world without you. I'll, I'll feel so alone. I'll be so lost. Please don't leave me. And the spirit of that mother or father or whomever it is will attach to the energetic body of the son or the daughter or whomever it might be that's pleading with them to stay and not leave them. And again, this is something very, uh, very plausible that could happen because we know that there are people on their deathbed who will say that, that they can't leave. They, they won't leave their physical body. They won't cross over because they know that there are people here that want them to stay. And we read a lot of 
accounts of this sort of thing in near-death experiences. And I've seen it with my own grandmother when she passed. She had had a stroke. She had cancer. It was all through her body. And I remember visiting my grandmother in the hospital. And she didn't really, she didn't recognize anybody at that time. But she, uh, she recognized me when I went into her room. And I went in by myself. And um, I remember her telling me, she said, there's been a man, she said his name was John, he was a priest or a minister, and he came to her and said that when she was ready, he would come for her, take her by the hand, lift her up out of her hospital bed, and, you know, they would uh, go home. But she looked at me kind of sad, and she said, but I can't. And I said, well, well, why can't you? And she said, well, because of all those other people out in the other room don't want me to go. And the rest of the family was in the waiting room at this time. So I said, you, you mean the family, everybody out in the waiting room? And she said, yes, they, they don't want me to go, so I have to stay here. And I told my grandmother, I said, hey, when John comes back, you go with him. Don't let those people hold you back. Don't let them hold you here. You know, you're, you're miserable. You're not happy here. Just go. And her face lit up and she said, really? And I said, yeah, get, get the hell out of here. That's what I told her. And she said, you know what? I'm going to. He said he's going to come back tomorrow night. And when he does, I'm going to go with him. And sure enough, two nights later, she passed away. So certainly I can attest to people or spirits that will become earthbound or won't even go through the transition of death because there are people here that don't want them to go. And this is why we have to be very careful with our relatives when they are getting ready to make their transition to say things such as, please don't leave me, don't go. I don't know what I'm going to do without you. I'll be lost without you. Because this causes a lot of conflict for the person and for the spirit of that person, even when it does exit the body. And we don't want them to become miserably earthbound because of us. Or, you know, God forbid, attach themselves to us where uh, we're beginning to have, you know, mother or father or grandmother's uh, problems because now their energy is attached to our energy and uh, we're starting to manifest uh, these problems that they had. And we're saying, oh, well, you know, they had that problem. I must have inherited that. You know, we, we don't want to go down that road. It's, it's not good for us, and it's, it's not good for the spirit or the soul of the person that we're keeping bound here on earth. But uh, very interesting concepts, and when you look at it from that uh, spiritualist and paranormal investigator uh, standpoint, uh, you see that this really does make a certain amount of sense. Now, could we say, you know, 100% definitely that earthbound spirits are attaching themselves to us? I mean, there's a lot we don't know about death and what happens after death. But we can we can put pieces together, you know, as we investigate and learn about these things. And I'll tell you, the unquiet dead really puts forth uh, an interesting premise that many of us um, probably have never even thought about before. And if you're interested in reading this book, it is The Unquiet Dead, A Psychologist Treats Spirit Possession, Detecting and Removing Earthbound Spirits by Dr. Edith Fiore. And that name is spelled E-D-I-T-H-F-I-O-R-E. -E. So very interesting book. 
And in this book, Dr. Fiore has a list of things that we can look at to maybe detect or tell if we might have an earthbound spirit attached to us. So I thought it might be interesting to read over that checklist and uh, see what we think. Are any of us experiencing these symptoms? And if we are, could it be because there is an earthbound spirit attached to our aura? All right, number one on the checklist is low energy levels, feeling fatigued, easily drained, easily tired out. Yeah, that's one a lot of us, uh, a lot of us probably experience at one time or another in life. And uh, this is said to be because, you know, you're, you're pretty much uh, having the spirit attached to you and they're using up part of your energy. They're using your life force energy as well. So you're, you're kind of uh, almost living for two people. And this can be very draining, very tiring. And who knows? Who knows? Maybe that's why so many people in this day and age say, well, geez, I'm so tired all the time. Maybe we all got a bunch of spirits attached to us. You never know. <laughs> Number two, character shifts and mood swings. Number three, inner voices or an inner voice speaking to you. Number four, abuse of drugs, including alcohol. Number five, impulsive behavior. Number six, memory problems. Number seven, poor concentration. Number eight, sudden onset of anxiety or depression. Number nine, sudden onset of physical problems with no obvious cause. Number 10, emotional and or physical reactions to reading The Unquiet Dead. So if you read this book and you start feeling uncomfortably uh, nervous or like, oh, this is just really creeping me out. It makes me feel weird. You know, I don't like this idea. Uh, then maybe uh, you're not actually feeling physically or emotionally uncomfortable it's the spirit attached to you that's feeling that way because it doesn't want to be detected and it doesn't want to be removed. And I suppose that uh, that is the good news in all of this is that these earthbound spirits can be removed from our aura, from our energy field and sent into the light. It's pretty much the same as... If a spirit was in a house, lingering in a house that somebody bought and they didn't realize that they passed or they were afraid to move on, you know, you would go in, you would, uh, you know, talk to that spirit. You would tell them it's okay. They've passed on. It's time to go to the light where their loved ones are. And, and most of the time they will go pretty quickly and pretty easily. So it's, it's the same concept when we're dislodging these spirits from ourselves or from another person and sending them into the light. Now, Dr. Edith Fiore has a very um, specific method that she uses to detach these spirits. And it does involve undergoing hypnosis it's uh, a very painless process, and she, uh, she actually includes a script of her process in the book. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're saying, geez, I think maybe I have something attached to me or, or rather someone attached to me, um, let me know. 
comment if you're listening to this podcast on one of the uh, video platforms. If you're listening to where it's audio only, uh, drop me a line, nocturnalmagic at gmail.com. My email will be in the podcast description for contact information. And if you would like me to uh, read that script in a podcast, uh, I would be very happy to do so. I am also a certified hypnotist and hypnotherapist, so uh, I feel I could do that justice if I were to uh, read the script of uh, getting uh, dislodging the entities or the spirits and sending them to the light. Uh, I would certainly do that. So if enough people are interested, I would do a podcast solely dedicated to reading Dr. Fiore's uh, spirit dislodging uh, hip, hypnotherapy script. Or if you'd rather do it yourself, you, you can find her book. I believe it's still in print. Um, if not, I know you can get used copies pretty cheap. They're still floating around out there. So you could, uh, you could just buy the book and record the script yourself on a voice recorder on your cell phone or a tape recorder or whatever the case may be. And, uh, you know, it might be a little more. Uh, comforting to hear your own voice uh, take you through the steps. But uh, also, trust me when I tell you, uh, hypnosis, uh, being under hypnosis, it's very natural. It's nothing scary. You're not in a trance where you can't control what, you know, what you're doing. It's, it's, a, it's a very natural, focused. So if this is something you would like to try or have me read the script in a podcast. Um, You know, don't be afraid. Uh, Don't buy into all the superstitions that are around hypnosis. It's really no different than many uh, hypnotherapists say that if you're reading a book or watching a movie and you're so engrossed, you don't hear if someone else walks into the room or calls your name. It's just really a heightened sense of concentration. That's all, uh, really all it is. And uh, I would imagine that uh, if there are spirits that are attached to people in this way, that there there would be other methods that one could use, but it it certainly might take um, having personally uh, present uh, a priest, a minister, someone who does this kind of work uh, that would be able to detect the spirit the way that someone would detect a a spiritual presence or energy in the room of, say, an old house, and then kind of talk them down, help them go into the light. You know, you've passed on, it's time to go. So what do you guys think? Do you think this is possible? Do you think this is a plausible theory that the spirits of departed human beings that are earthbound could attach themselves to the living and cause certain physical, emotional, or even mental problems? Or do you think this is something that's just so far out, it's, it's unbelievable? Or do you think maybe this is uh, too frightening and it's something you'd rather not think about at all? (laughs) Either way, uh, leave a comment if you're listening on a video platform or drop me a line. My email is in the podcast description. Let me know what you think about this, uh, this topic, this theory, and what you think of the book The Unquiet Dead by Edith Fiore. If you're interested in reading it, Or does it sound like a lot of nonsense to you? These are the kind of topics that uh, I think it's very fun and interesting to have a discussion about. And this is all part of the journey into spiritualism. You know, the different things that are out there, the theories, the experiences people have had when it pertains to the spirit realm or the spirits of those who are departed, angels, you know, it's, it's all, it's all part of the subject matter. And that's why I find it so incredibly interesting. 
So I appreciate all of you listening. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. As usual, everyone out there, stay safe, stay well, treat one another with love, compassion, decency, and respect. And I'll see you next time here on Journey into Spiritualism.